So we just had one really fun weekend at Talladega. Side-by-side -side racing, big crashes, and a photo finish defining the weekend. It's all a NASCAR fan could ask for. But there seems to be a more divisive subject that's been shot around the NASCAR world. What is old is new again, as the double yellow line rule is on the debate stage again. Some, like Jeff Gordon and Steve Letart, support NASCAR and the rule, while others like Dale Jr. and the majority of fans support the abolishment of the rule. So today, I figured I'd throw my hat into the gauntlet because... Why the hell not? The double yellow line rule, or how it used to be known as is just the yellow line rule, was put into place in 2001. Now, why you may ask? Well, it was NASCAR's attempt to make plate racing safer. Andy Petrie racing, Dale Earnhardt racing, and Richard Childress racing. Look at this mess! Yeah, that was so oh, man! It did work. I thought it was going to be a crash. They have to wide for the lead. This is going to get exciting. Look at Earnhardt coming up on, on the back of Jeff Gordon down the back straightaway. He'll try to make it four wide, but Michael Walker's going to try to make it five wide. Ten laps to go this time. Once these cars start making pit stops, which won't be too long, look at Michael Walker on the outside, and Stewart and Skinner almost get it together. Oh, they're in the grass. Oh, here goes Skinner across in front of all these cars. talking back and forth. We've seen them working better together on the racetrack than before. That could pay big dividends when this thing gets down to the end. Look at Earnhardt! Right down to the apron to take the lead! In response to these instances, NASCAR made a rule that drivers couldn't advance their position while racing on the apron, but that if they are forced down there, the forcer could be penalized. But in this action, Pandora's box was open. Penalties would be handed out a few times for violations through the years, but it wouldn't be until 2003 in the Aaron's 499 that it took center stage. And into each other at 190 miles an hour. Here comes Junior. He's got to run. Kenseth tried to oh, close him oh, off. Oh, oh, oh. It's going to be borderline, guys. Oh. It's going to be borderline. Look, I'm a bigger Dale Junior fan than anyone, but man, that was definitely on the border there. It could be called, and there's a great argument for it. But this wasn't the only instance of the rule being absurd. Safety would soon become an issue with this rule. Dave, Kyle Busch wants to pit. He tried not to get out of line, but the 11 got in under him. They were telling him to wave everybody off, and then he tried to get oh! around Tony Stewart. And we got everybody trying to pit and go around people. Trying not to wreck. Carl Edwards, the 99 car, had no place to go. They all started slowing up in front of him. And that on Edwards. Bill, they just told him over the radio that he will have to make a pass through. He said, for what? He said, you passed below the yellow line. He said, I was trying to avoid the crash. And then his spotter, Bobby Hudson, chimed in and said, I'm sure other cars passed us because we slowed down. We'll have to take a look at the tape. But some of the worst would still be to come. In that spot, so they're not getting that opportunity. David Reagan hasn't won. Regan Smith, the rookie. Paul Menard is there. Tony Stewart has never won at Talladega in a NASCAR Sprint Cup car. He's going to do a lot of blocking right here. They've got to run on him. Got to run. Here they come. I can't go down there and do that, though. Actually, can't I think that. it's legal on the last lap. He might have got it right there. In the move that caused Smith to be stripped of a win, NASCAR used its option of a ball and strike call. Smith had went down below the line to stay off of Stewart. Choosing to take that option on the apron rather than taking out the 20 car in front of the field and causing a crash. The following April, the complete opposite of this situation happened due to the yellow line rule as well. Oh, no, I don't think he can step out until he waits till the last second and picks he up the guy go outside. Is Edwards going to go outside? Oh, no. He turns it. No, no. Oh, and that no. destroyed the front end of Newman's car. No. Edwards will not make it to the flag. Oh, Brad Keselowski won this race. Keselowski later stated that he was not going to give up his line, go under the line and get penalized, just so the 99 could win by blocking him down there. This crash, with the 99 going up into the catch fence, was caused by the WL line rule, showing something that should probably be self-evident. Restrictor plate racing, and racing in general, will be dangerous no matter what the rules are. The WL line rule has had the excuse of safety used in its existence for two decades. But over the past 20 years, we've seen dangerous wrecks caused by and in spite of this rule. 
A lot of people also look at it as a way to protect the drivers from themselves. And I get this, especially when you look back at Jeff Gordon and Mike Skinner in 1999. But many would also ask, isn't this the kind of risk and skill that fans pay to see? Well, yes. If a driver makes a dumb decision, it's on them. They have to live with it, and NASCAR can penalize them as they will. For me personally, I say abolish the rule. Let the cards fall where they may. If drivers want to drive like idiots, they'll pay the price for it. But now, I want to pass this to you. Do you want to keep the double yellow line rule, or do you want to abolish it? Let me know down in the comments below. Hit that like button and subscribe for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, have a good one.